football is back and we got a game that delivered the goods last night just like we hoped it would before we break it down were you able to watch it on amazon <laughs> Ungodly easy, yes. Okay, good. I pressed Actually, no, button. it got me last night. So we head back to school night. Right. I'm ra racing home to catch the last couple of minutes of the game. And I go, I turn the TV on. And I was like, oh, crap, how do I get it? See? And I had to go through the Apple TV. And that's, had to, it was a whole big thing. That is all I was saying. And Not that it was hard it to watch bit. it. It's just that when you sat down, you might have forgotten that's how to watch it. But by all accounts, it was a major, major success. And uh, people were quite happy with the performance of the Amazon broadcast. I, of course, as a fan, you guys as a fan, we got the goods. We got exactly what we wanted. A great game. Came down to the wire. Lots of offense. 27-24, of course. The Kansas City Chiefs win. Mahomes is now 3-1 and one in games he played against Herbert, who's the heir apparent. But here's what I took out of the game. I will break the game down in a second. Here's the big picture, like the 30,000-foot view of what last night's game means. If you are a Buffalo Bills fan, it ain't about you. That's the team you got to beat. Now, great, arguably greatest playoff game of all time last year, but everyone has forgotten that Pat Mahomes is Pat Mahomes. You know, the rhetoric was, will Mahomes be as good without Tyreek Hill? Screw that, man. It don't matter who's lining up for the Chiefs. That guy is special. You saw it again last night. The sidearm touchdown pass you're looking at right here. And for anybody that might have slept on Kansas City because they thought the Bills were now the team to beat, they reminded everybody last night, you know, the road to the Super Bowl goes through Kansas City. True. San Diego did a fantastic job. So they kind of yeah. showed that, you know, and Mahomes struggled there a little bit in the middle of the game. It, it looked like, you know, things could be going south. And then, you know, they get the interception for the touchdown and the crowd goes wild and it's crazy. But there for a little bit, he was looking a little down. So they, there are things to it, but I think you got the Bills and the Chiefs. It's neck and neck. Yeah, and listen, the first half didn't live up to expectation from an offensive standpoint. You know, it was 10-7 at halftime. And as you just said, San Diego's very good defensively, right? Yeah. You know, they've got, you know, Khalil Mack. They've got both. So they have guys who can get to the quarterback, which to me, again, he didn't throw for 350 yards. He didn't throw for five touchdowns. But when the Kansas City Chiefs had to make a play, that's all that guy does. And it might not look pretty. It might look like us on the playground. That's the beauty of it. And I would take that guy. You know, there's always that old stock question. Down five, two minutes to go. Who's your quarterback? And for decades, the answer was, oh, it's Joe Montana. Oh, it's Joe Montana. It's that guy. That's the guy I want. No? Yeah, no, I'm with you. But it, Herbert showed that he could do it, too. Um, you know, obviously, they got the touchdown there, but couldn't get the onside kick. But he drove him down, uh, even yeah. with the injury and everything. Like, he was there. So, I think he's coming along. It was a great performance. I'm, I was happy of what he did in that game. Yeah, listen, the uh, just watching the L.A. Chargers uh, compete like that, Herbert, whether he hurt his ribs, I guess we'll find out today the extent of it, That that's a man. Mm -hmm. That's a guy that showed up. There's even that one play on third and short where he could have easily ran for the first down. Now, they converted the fourth down play, and he didn't even run for it. He kind of threw the ball away because it looked like his ribs were killing him. You could argue that the single most important play of the game yesterday was a drop, and it was reviewed, and it's the Asante, Asante Samuel Jr. non-interception. Mm -hmm. I watched it 30 times. I would, have, I would have sworn on a stack of Bibles that is an interception. Now, the NFL came out after the game, and the way this works is, you know, uh, a representative of the referees speaks to a single reporter. They're called pool reporters, and they're able to interview the refs. And the NFL referee said, look, the ball hit the ground, which it did. You see the statement right there. And then they thought it moved a little bit. That's yeah. the debatable part to me. There's no debating that the tip of the ball is touching the ground. So if you want to call it incomplete just on that, I don't hate you. But the ball didn't move at all once he cradled it and came down with it. Here's the thing I find interesting. I'm not sure anyone's all that surprised that Asante dropped it, if you want to call it a drop in. Historically, it's now going to go down as a dropped interception, or better than that, just a random incomplete pass. You know who his father is, right? <laughs> <laughs> the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. This is what the Samuels do. 
let's go back in time. Just a couple years. Not sure if you remember a certain play in a certain Super Bowl. But yeah, Asante's dad did the same exact thing <laughs> in the Super Bowl against the New York Giants. So are we surprised? That's called DNA. That's, that's, <laughs> that's all it's called. My grandfather's bald. I'm bald. Asante Samuel drops an interception. His son drops an interception. I do think I feel bad for him because he had a great game, I thought. And I would have counted that as an interception. And the problem with it, of course, is that the drive then continues for Kansas City. And they scored their only touchdown in the third quarter. And that, obviously, is a big difference in the game. Completely. And I think that's the crazy part. The little things that change a game in the NFL. Like that one dropped interception, which... I'm with you. That ball did not move. Yeah. It, right. Listen, it definitely touches the ground. It touches the ground. But right. the rule has changed over the years where if you have control of the ball and it looked like he had cradled under it, mm -hmm. even if the ball does make contact with the ground, you know, in years past, that was an automatic incomplete pass, right? But they did change that rule. The reason they're now saying it was an incomplete pass and not an interception is they thought the ball moved. Man, I've seen this video another 30 times this morning. And I'm going to acknowledge, I'm not knocking the NFL. This is a very difficult call to make. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying the NFL screwed up or the referees got it wrong. You could argue on their side. So I, I respect it and I get it. But I didn't see that ball move at all. Well, did they, they called an interception on the field, correct? Yeah, they overturned it. And they overturned it. Yes. So that has to be like the insurmountable evidence says that we yeah. overturned it because of the call on the field. Right. I don't think that was insurmountable. Mm -hmm. No, neither do I. Neither do I. No, well, listen, it, it doesn't matter now. This doesn't change anything, in my opinion, when you talk about the landscape of the AFC and the power rankings, if you believe in that kind of thing. Kansas City, to me, is the team to beat. But like you just said, the Chargers showed you, as they have you know, since Herbert got the job mm -hmm. and became the starting quarterback, they belong. Mm -hmm. They're in the conversation. Now, if you want to tell me it's Chiefs, Bills, 101A, I think that's what we'd all agree on. I just don't think anybody is going to want to play the Chargers in the postseason until the last possible minute because they have a very good defense. They have a quarterback who can sling it all over the field. They were also playing without one of their big weapons. Keenan Allen didn't play in the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. And when that team is at full strength, outside of playing in bad weather, which they may have to do if you have to go to Buffalo, if you have to go to Kansas City in January, mm -hmm. that is not a team you want to play come uh, postseason. No, they got to be Bills and Kansas City 1A and 1B. It's got to be Chargers number two then, right? I, I would go Chiefs, Bills, Chargers. That's my top three. Now, you could also make the argument, as many people have on this show, that before we get all carried away with <laughs> Justin Herbert, he's a 500 quarterback. Records do mean something. And while he had a wide receiver banged up, they probably should have called the timeout. The other key play of the game was not just the dropped interception that then led to a Chiefs touchdown. It was this, mm -hmm. a 99-yard uh, pick six touchdown return interception. Justin Herbert threw that ball. He yeah. did. And if we're going to take shots at guys like, oh, I don't know, Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> for making a bad pass <laughs> in a big spot, that would say bad play. Now, the receiver was banged up. He's not even running a route. You see it right there. And Herbert thinks he's going to break in or a slant. He doesn't. He's banged up. And, of course, that changes the dynamic of the game. The best part of this play is the kid on Kansas City right there that intercepts the ball and takes it to 99 yards has a great backstory. And I didn't know it until I woke up this morning. Six months ago, he was working at Wendy's with his mom, slinging burgers. He was a seventh-round draft pick. Not well thought of as a guy that was going to make it or crack the starting lineup or get on the field for a great team like Kansas City. And he went from, no joke, working at Wendy's with his mom awesome. to being a seventh-round draft pick to getting on the field to taking an interception 99 yards to the house. That's sick. That's right. one of the stories that for sensitive guys like me and Nick, you know, <laughs> we well up. We get, we get teary-eyed. See right there? See, it just, it feels we, right. 
And we think about all the hard work we've put in to our careers, I, right? I lived in my car for two <laughs> seasons of my career. Oh, Don't stop make it, it about yourself. It, it, no, you, you guys this? are not the sensitive ones. Or I'm sensitive How to this. How are you making I this live about yourself? Because it is about me Let's talk now. about the kid. It's awesome, though. Yeah. Listen, it is sweet. I dated heavy girls in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so don't tell me about living in your car in, in Mexico. The sacrifices this man has made. Yes. You're right, you I apologize. You know what it's like to eat ramen noodles and live in a retirement home <laughs> in Buffalo, New York, making $12,000 a year? I do. I've done it, sir. As of all I. right. And now you guys can uh, check off another box of a city I lived in, which apparently the guys in the back have some kind of pool going. Every time I talk about another city I've been to or lived in, they check off another box. So you're going to add bad Buffalo to that list. Listen, I love uh, NFL getting started this way. It's not the greatest week of matchups uh, like Chiefs Chargers, but obviously there's some huge games. And again, I watched last night. And I do get envious as much as we're taking some shots and having some fun. You know, at Samuel and, and, uh, and, and uh, the L.A. Chargers, boy, those two teams make it fun. They make it fun, and I don't know what that's like. And there's a lot of people watching right now who watched the game last night, right, mm -hmm. who are saying, wait a minute, the Texans never look like that. How come the Panthers don't play like that? You know, the Jets don't play like that. The Giants don't look like that. And it's just a different level and a different brand of football. That's why the NFL is so popular, because that was highly entertaining three hours of football on a Thursday night, which gave all of us the pass of doing the dishes, <laughs> taking out the garbage, trying to figure out our kids' mathematic homework, which I can no longer do, <laughs> or answering questions about why people now hate Columbus. It was awesome last night, and I loved it. So more of that NFL more of that. Hey there, thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.